Hello. This presentation will share the experiences of 13 EFA design students and one professor in their day diving into a design archive. My name is Susan Laporte, Chair and Professor of the Communication Design Department at the College for Creative Studies located in Detroit. I would like to thank our unique collection of like-minded characters at the Henry Ford Museum, the CCS Office of Partnerships, and my amazing students. Our like-minded goal was to hunt for type in unexpected spaces, rethink history, and expand our notion of what design practice could be. The Henry Ford Archive is full of type at every turn. We spent three hours wandering the museum and the archive, documenting everything that caught our eye. What we found were artifacts, typography, and messages that represent moments in our history that still offer us lessons today. So let's have a look. The collection was a type nerd's dream, but tethered to many of the specimens that we found was a history that needed further unpacking and in some cases reconciling. Who were these objects and messages designed for and who was excluded? How can the artifacts be deconstructed or read beyond their surface to get to the fuller history of what the marks and messages represented? So we dug in, looking at abolitionist newspapers, type specimens from the 19th century, 20th century modular type, protest posters, and examining the messages, communities, and how the designs either helped or hindered to amplify their voices. 19th century wood type led us to examine early forms of writing and mark making across the centuries and around the globe. More typographic expressions like handwriting, call to action for women's rights, and the recognition that not all voices were lifted in the 1920s. Uncovering who were the Hello Girls and what is a telephone switchboard, these were some of the many kernels that expired new typographic form. From concept, we moved to form giving strategies. This was the student's first experience in designing type, so methods and tools needed to be integrated. If you're designing strokes, eyes, tittles, shoulders, bowls, asking students to diagram type to understand the nomenclature and the anatomy was essential. Next, getting the, the hand, the eye, and the mind in sync to draw and understand good typographic construction and then extending those skills to pen tools, handlebars, and beziers. To establish the DNA of type specimens, we started like the pros at Underwear Foundry in the Netherlands. We began with the process of an H, an O, and an A. Because a circle and a square and a triangle will give you the geometry that you need to generate more letter forms. Additional front-loading of type methods from my own research to help facilitate their sketch process and then back to paper, iterating to define that unique typographic DNA. Let's look at a few typefaces as a result. Jewel by Brenna was the most direct reproduction of the sample set found at the D Henry Ford. But quickly it became clear to Brenna that her system could produce simple but smart variations. Concave embe embellishments, no embellishments, quickly expanded her alphabet to a family. And here are the final, some final refinements in lowercase. Chisel by Schuyler was inspired by metal machine type. And chisel is a highly interpretive specimen, a marriage of two with a thoughtful methodology developed to harness the hybridizing by Schuyler. Beautifully iterative sketching on trace and more construction and deconstruction and reconstruction of typographic parts in order to help create new forms and to complete the alphabet. And here's her more refined set. Hello Girl by Mariana. Mariana was fascinated by the switchboard we found at the archive. So Hello Girl is an homage to the women that connected people every day, all day. The grid, the wall of dots and lines became the structure and proportions for her oblique typeface with multiple serifs. We had amazing Zoom crits in a lingering COVID world. And here's the final exploration with alternative glyphs. Star by Lucy 
Reimagine frock tours with a nod towards modular construction, whose variables can be iterative through the use of grid and fixed parts. Tracing paper and hand tools to move beyond the grid. Additive and subtractive materials to see and feel the curves beyond digital iterations. And here is her refined set. Oleaf by Maddie. Maddie was inspired by historical forms that seemed contemporary and historical struggles for women rights that also sadly seemed contemporary. Layers and layers of quick gestures and more details helped Maddie to establish her, her H, her O, and A. And once discovered, she was on her way to building more letter forms based on that geometry. Last step, how do you package this project up so that it can live in the archive as well. What better historical document than a specimen book? And as students refined their alphabets and built them out in glyphs, we created teams to explore the design of a book collaboratively. We gathered materials and shared and formed consensus around a general concept. Each student received a template and was given a section of the book. Color palettes were inspired by the museum brand colors, and students were asked to include the original inspiration from the archive. Each student had a color fold-out section, and each designed a companion newspaper as a supplement. Students had the ability to show the full character set, and then to show it in the context of a paragraph. Playful pages to demonstrate the pattern-making potential included in each student's section using their alphabet. A, playful, a playfully edited index and glossary were included in the back matter. And in the end, the students learned how to design type, discover the joy of historical research, redefining the parameters of design practice to include making for your own purpose, and the power of collaborating with each other every step of the way. Our museum partners were thrilled by the documents we shared back for their inclusion into the archive. Thank you.